Hello everyone, it's Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel. Came out of House Shift. How's everybody? So um, we're doing good. We have most of the, the pot itself is done. So now we're going to need to add the little rings and the handles and paint it up and uh, all that good stuff. So that is what we are going to do now in part two. So hope you enjoy. Okay, so it has been 30 minutes and I took it out on my little tile and I kind of let it cool for a little bit. Um, so good news, this was not plastic. I gave myself a heart attack with that. And of course we know the one on the foil is just fine. So we'll take that off. So as you can see, you know, we did get some texturing from the foil. So we're going to sand that. Um, and then with this, I kind of had to use a palette knife and sort of get in there very carefully, wedge it a bit, um, and then kind of twisted and got this out. But see, I love how it did the shape. Now, if you look at it from this angle, you can see that it's it's fairly uneven. So the nice thing with polymer clay is we can sand it. I'm going to grab my sanding block here and I'm just going to put this face down and I'm going to sand it flat. So here we have the pot and we have the lid and the lid fits pretty much, more or less, just barely. <laughs> Oh, worst case scenario, we'll just have to remake the lid, but it does need to be a little better on the corners. So I'm going to do that real quick. I mean, corners, really? It's a circle, you idiot. Uh-huh. Edges. Edges need to be a little more even. Okay. So that's probably all I should, all I should mess with with it. But, you know, as you can see, yeah, no, I, I need to mess with that more. <laughs> like, as you can see, oh, that looks like crap. That's what, that's what I can see. Okay, that's a little bit better. Kind of fits on there. All right, not too terrible. Um, worst case scenario, we can maybe add a little material, but I think that's going to be good like that. So we're going to set this aside because I'm going to keep this because when I go to do the, the paper clay versions of it, I'm definitely going to use that because I do like the way it, you know, it had the nice um, doming to it with that. So I'll get this out of the way. All right. So we have our pot. We have our lid. We're obviously nowhere near done. Um, one of the things I am going to want to do too is I think I'm going to put like a, a little snake of clay around the inside here kind of as a lip so that when this gets put on it doesn't fall off you know um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the handles and the little rings for the top and the knob which should in theory be easier so i have reconditioned the clay you know every time you set it aside it, it'll start to kind of go back to being um, a little difficult to to deal with so set that in there and I'm going to bring our tile back out because with the handles, we're going to do the handles. So bring the example back in. It's kind of close, but hopefully you can see the handles are, are right connected at the top. And they do kind of go up a little bit. We're not going to worry too much about that, but you know, I know I'm not going to have to put them say down here. They're going to go right in line with the top, which is fantastic, let me tell you. Because what we can do is we can roll out our little snake of clay, you know, we can make our handles, we can put them up here and then we can put this upside down so that we know that the handles are going to dry or dry, bake flat with it, right? So saying, okay, how am I going to do this? Well, first of all, we need to take our little clay and we're going to make a little snake with it. should be good. It's not the most even snake you've ever seen, but we can take the handles from the parts that are even. So I have my ruler here and it's got the breakdown, which of course you can't see. And guess what? I really can't see either. And I thought we know that we want the width of them to be about eight millimeters and we want the depth to be about 3.3. So I have another one and this one has them as well. So I thought, what if I put this under here? Yeah. Uh-huh. There we go. Now I can see and I can go ahead and line this up in theory so I can see that'll be about 3.3 .3 there, right? So let's take a little bit of our clay here. This may or may not work, you know, 
is what it is. All right, so I'm going to line this up on the, the 10 here. And then I now want to kind of curve it there. And then I can come up right about at the 8, right? That should make my handles about the right size, maybe. Oh, that looks a little big. Well, that's about right. Okay. It's my little tools here. Not like I know what I'm doing with these things, you know. Kind of. Because these are not, the handles are roundish, but they're not like super round, right? So we want them to be even. So we can kind of form it on here. And we do want to leave a little bit extra there. That way we can put it on here, and it's going to be about like that. So let's see, how do we take this off of here carefully? Oh, for the, okay. Again, you know, not my, not my forte, this stuff. Not terribly good at it. Okay. And that way we can kind of form it over here so that it's flat with this. Now, how well this is going to stay, I don't know. Um, but there's always glue, right? So as long as we get this to where it's going to look flat with this, it'll kind of automatically give us a bit of a... Um, you know, gluing surface too, which would be cool because we're probably going to need it. And once we glue it on there and it's nice and secure, then we can kind of go and um, fix it. So let's put that there for now and we'll do the final kind of forming of them once we have the other one. And so that seemed to work pretty good with putting it on the ruler like this. So we'll do that again. yeah when you're doing it on here this looks weird it looks like it's gonna be too big but yet when I put it on there it, it actually looked fine so we'll see if we'll see if this one did because I didn't leave myself as much margin for error <laughs> all right so we'll put you directly across from that yeah sure we will come on I just need you to stick for a second man seriously not to me Story of my life. Okay, so now we can get this on here. I'll use a little tool because, yeah, of course, it's wanting to stick to my hand, which is not acceptable. And yes, I know they're not quite even, but like I said, we're going to do that when we get it down here. So, right now, what I want to do is just get this nice and flat on here. And then we'll put it down on this. Okay, so see we've got our little our little handles. And they're kind of okay. That's out of the way. And then we can put this down here. And now we can really form them because this is what it's going to be baked on. So I'm not going to have to move it again. As I get like a little bit of it on there. Yuck. Um, I'm not going to have to move it again, you know, of course, until after I've baked it. And then if... You know, if they don't stay, if they come off, then it's not the end of the world. I can just um, glue them on, you know? Okay. So I'm using the other one to kind of see this one. I'm going to take a little material off of there because that's just a little too thick. Okay, so they look fairly even-ish. <laughs> to me. Um, so let's verify it though. So we've got, it's supposed to be eight millimeters and we're sitting right about eight millimeters, just a little tiny bit over. And then this one, same thing. And it needs to stick out a little over three millimeters and it does. And it does. Okay, so yeah, they're fairly even, so we're just going to put this down, we're going to step away. 
and we're going to work on this. It's going to be a little trickier. So right now, actually, that I look at it the way I have this, we need the lid to be, no, not the lid. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be a huge lid. All right. So 4.8 for the knob, so just around 5 millimeters which is on our little snake business because work smarter not harder right about there okay so we'll do that we'll get this back to round here and then we're going to do well, let's take about this much so i have an idea and I think what I'll do is I'll just make the knob on here and then we'll we'll take it off and glue it because you know we don't wanna we don't wanna mess with it. Now the knob doesn't look like this. I have the knob here. The knob actually tapers. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this. I'm just gonna start kind of pinching it. Um, up here at the top and kind of rolling it so that it'll make that little taper shape and of course I have long nails so my nails keep getting into this but we just want to start that taper get it kind of where we want it and we'll put it back down on here and then we'll sort of fine-tune it I'll go ahead and pinch off that extra bit and this one I think we're definitely gonna, gonna do in such a way as we'll be gluing it down, right? about as good as I'm gonna get on that and I'm sorry about the lighting but um, I've, I've tried to get it as even as I can I'll do this a bit flatter um, so if we need to we can um, you know cut like this little stem part down or sand it down until it's the height that we want but you know I'd, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it right for the size of it so I'm just gonna leave it about like that for now and we're gonna bake this just like this we're just gonna leave it the heck alone um, and then we'll glue that on for sure because that way too we can paint that because that's gonna be silver versus the rest of it so we can paint this separate instead of me having to you know try to paint and then go back and fix this one and then go back and fix the other mistakes that I made and then go and just back and forth until I'm like you know tell this so all right next step is gonna be the um, circles. As we can see on our example, we have the circle. So I'm just going to do this partial circle and I'm going to leave it where it would have the name on here. Um, just because, yeah, I'll have to figure out. Now, as we've seen with my lack of mastery of, of polymer clay, there's no way I'm going to be able to, like, say, make that out of it and put it on there. That's not happening. So, but at least the uh, circles I can do. So, same thing, we're gonna take a little bit of this off here and we're gonna make it into a little snake business. And so these need to be fairly thin. And you do, when, when you start getting these a little too long where you can't manage it and, and keep it all down at the same time, you know, you're gonna to have to kinda of, uh, shorten it up a bit, but we'll see, we'll see how well I do. And I think what I'll do is I'll do enough for all of them <clears throat> just so I can make sure they're the same size. <clears throat> okay, so now with this, this looks about the right size for those, I think. Um, they may be a little large, but that's okay. I, I, I don't, I'm not completely confident that I could get them much thinner than this without breaking them. So now we know from the outside we want the inner one 
um, to be about 6.4 millimeters from the outside. We want the mid one to be about 4.3 and the outer to be two. So I think what I'll do is, let me go get my pencil so you know I've got some in my mechanical pencil. These are a lot more precise. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure and I'm gonna make like a little tiny line because this is gonna be painted over. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it, but I'll hit a couple spots so that I kind of have a guideline to follow going around. I think that might be the best way to make sure it's even. The nice thing is if we get these um, rings even, it'll by proxy kind of make the edge look a little more even, I'm hoping. Change of plans, we're gonna switch to this because I really can't see the pen or the pencil marks very good. So I think I can see it if I do a dot with this. So we will we'll start this over. I'll fast forward through this, obviously. a hot mess but we tried okay so <laughs> I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna cut this one square on the end as square as I can get it and then I'm just gonna kind of go around sort of these little guides and that's all they are is just kind of a something to maybe help me a little bit keeping it straight I can already tell this is way too thick. Okay. So let's do it a little bit thinner. sort of, more or less. We'll see when we get the others on how bad that is. I have to, to redo it. So I'm gonna do the same for the middle one. And again, you know, here's where the right tools for the job come in handy because if I had the liquid polymer clay that helps it stick down to it kind of like a glue, you know, it, it'd be a lot easier to do this, but I don't, but that's okay. And you know, are the the ridges on here, the circle's gonna be in scale? Probably not. They don't look super in scale to me, but I don't know, we'll see when these other ones are on. And of course the dots I put on to help me, which didn't help terribly, um, are distracting me now. Yay. <laughs> So there's our middle one. It's not completely done. I'm going to do the, the fine tuning stuff to it here in a sec, but I just want to go ahead and put that over there. Oops. And get this here for the center one. And then I'll start to even everything out. But it's difficult because it would rather stick to me than the polymer clay, which is a bit irritating, but is what it is.
Okay, so there's that. That's that's about as good as I'm willing to do. You will recognize this as um, not incredibly even and having a bunch of texture. I'm I'm hoping that once I bake this and see if I need to put adhesive to hold it down. Once that's done, I'm hoping maybe I can sand it um, to get some of that additional texture off because it's so small. Um, and I, you know, it's all about having the right tools. I have tools. Are they the right tools? Probably not. Um, is this why somebody who does this kind of stuff professionally, um, is there a reason they don't use these? Uh, yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> you know, they have much better tools <clears throat> and skill because again, this is not, I am by no means any kind of expert on polymer clay. I'm very much a beginner um, with it, but that should be okay. So we'll see how that is. And of course I put the little dots to help me. Did they help me? No, they actually ended up distracting me uh, from it. I probably would have been better off not putting them on there. So note to self on that. And I figured since we're gonna be baking some stuff off anyway, kind of as a side thing, let me get this stuff conditioned up a little bit. Just a little bit of it. Don't need a ton, I don't think. Okay, so I got this nice and more conditioned. I have these. These are silicone molds. Pull these up. So this makes croissants and this makes like a little breadstick and some little cookie things. So since I'm baking this, I might as well make some extra stuff for it, right? Not to mention the fact that somebody was responsible when they were at the craft store and got some cream colored paints, which I did not have on the last thing. So we're gonna put those over here. Okay. So with these, these are super easy. You are just going to try to get a toothpick. Probably need that. Okay, so you just take a little bit of the clay and you kind of push it down into the mold real good. You wanna make sure you don't have any gaps like this one, you can kind of see it and then sort of even off the back part of it. And again, we can always sand things if we need to. Now, if you're really good, you can, you know, come up with different um, mixtures of the clay colors because of course this stuff comes in lots of different colors that are a little more like the actual um, color of the baked goods so that you, you don't have to do nearly as much coloring when it's done. Kind of even that off a bit, save ourselves some work. Okay, so we've got it there. You just kind of pull this and there we go. Look at that. It's a croissant. So this on here. So I'll do one each of all of these, I think. Um, this is a little tiny thing, so we'll use that for this. And so what I'm doing is, you know, I put that in there and then I'll use this to kind of shave off the extra on the bottom. And then Voila, this is a little cookie, looks like, of some sort. And then we've got the little breadstick looking business here, which I've put on here upside down like an idiot. Come on, there we go. Let's do one of these croissants here. So I'm gonna fill this up um, and then I'm going to show you real quick what we're going to do to texture some of these before we put them in. We don't want to texture that, obviously, but um, I'll join you back in a second when I have this full of little bits of stuff because, hey, why not, why not use the space in the oven time, huh? So I didn't, like, completely fill it because, yeah, no, but um, I did put a few more on there. So as you can see, like, the little cookies and the breads and stuff don't really look super natural because they don't have any texture to them. So that's when you can take a stencil brush or an old toothbrush and you just kind of want to pounce that on there a little bit. So you give it sort of that um, baked good kind of texture. So do that to all these. Mm -hmm. 
So I've added some texture to those. We do not want to add texture to those, obviously. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go back and bake all this stuff up again. So 230 degrees um, for 30 minutes. For those of you who do Celsius, it's going to be 110 Celsius. Okay. So I'm going to do that and I will come back. Um, I don't know if I'll, I'll get around to painting and decorating. We'll see because if this comes out good enough, we'll just stick with this one. Um, and then maybe I'll experiment with uh, the other two paper clays because I'll be doing it exactly the same. Um, and then I can show you kind of at the end, maybe, I don't know. But these will be good for not only the um, dining room and the Mad Scientist Lab house, but I do have an upcoming project that's going to be ridiculous. Ridiculous. But I'll tell you guys about that in a different video. But just think Alice in Wonderland and we'll need lots of pastries and baked goods and things. So anyways, I'm going to get these in there to bake and I will come back to you when they're done. So these have now been baked. Um, and with the circles, I'm not completely thrilled um, with them. Oops, as I broke a little piece of one off there. Um, what I was thinking of doing is I was going to, you know, I was hoping these didn't stick very good and I was going to remove them and try something different, but they did stick pretty good except for that one piece. Um, so I'm going to have to re-glue that down because I don't know that I can get the rest. Well, let's see. Let's see if I can get them off. No. I can already tell that that will be an unmitigated disaster. So let's just don't go there. Um, and I'll do another one at some point and I'll do it with the idea that I have it. I will tell you about it. Just need to get this back on here where it lived. Before we go painting anything, right? All right, so, so I was looking at these. These are a little, little large to me. It's like a cinnamon roll, doesn't it? Um, so ideally they would have been a little bit smaller and I thought, you know, I wish I'd thought of this earlier. Um, I have something I've used before in other stuff, so it's this. This is the guts of uh, paracord. So if you take paracord and you pull the stuff out to kind of hollow it out, this is what's in there. And I thought, oh, this would have been perfect. This is like the perfect, this is what I used on the couch, I think it was, for decoration. This would have made great little circles on it and would have been a lot easier to deal with. So in future, I will probably use this. But you know what? We're going to go with it the way we have it now. So we have that. We have our little knob here ready to go. And we have our pot with the handles. And I'm going to very gently get my thumbnail up under these. There we go. Okay, and so there's that. Right, so we got the pot, we got the lid, and we have our little handle here, and it's going to go on top of here. So what I'm going to do, oh, and we have all of our little baked good stuff, which we'll do in a, in a later video. I'll show you how to um, do those, depending on, because I, I have a sneaky suspicion this is going to be too... Um, just because I can't do anything quickly, you know, but then again, yeah, I can't do anything quickly. So we have these three here that we're going to paint. So our knob is going to be silver. And as luck would have it, guess what showed up in the interim while I was doing this? So this is the Tamiya um, paint, and this is in chrome. And look at that. Look how shiny that is. So I think that's going to be a really nice chrome color. So we're going to use that for the... Um, handle because as you can see on this example it does have the stainless steel knob not all of them do but this one does and also on our example you can see barely maybe so the rim is done um, with a clear porcelain enamel and then you have the color on the inside the color on the outside so i think what we're going to do is we'll do the rim this chrome as well um, just so it uh, kind of matches it'll look a little more real that way so I think we're going to do this one in probably this really dark blue. I want to see how that comes out. Um, and, and the dark blue will make this a lot less noticeable too. And then this is going to be the inside. So now these are enamel paints. Um, I don't know that they are water soluble. So I'm going to get a brush that I don't mind if I can't ever use the brush again <laughs> for these just in case. All right, so I've got these. This one I like almost never use, so I don't really care about it. Um, and then this one I've got a whole, I buy these as like a big 
classroom pack of them because I end up using it for adhesives and things like that and I end up destroying them so that way it's okay if something happens to that but we'll we'll find out here oh yeah we should probably put the top on the glue that might be good all right so I think for the knob we should probably put that on some tape so I got my painters tape here and I'll tape it down like so and I'm going to take the knob and I'm going to put it this way first so that I can do the top of it. Um, and I'll go ahead and put this here too um, and I'll just do that top rim and we'll do that with the chrome. And then I'll see if I can't zoom into this so that you can see a little bit better. Okay, we'll just use what's in the, the cap here. So I'm not going to need a whole lot. We'll give this a few minutes to dry. I just have my paper towel over here and I'm just kind of um, brushing it off on there a bit so that um, you know I don't have to try to go rinse it or anything right away because I still have to do the other side of that but I'm gonna give this a minute to dry and that I really like that chrome that's that's actually looking very metallic so um, we may make some stainless steel cookware and stuff too and that'll be super helpful for the tools but anyway give that a minute and then we'll come back and then we'll start doing the rest of that and the other side of this. All right, so it seems like that is dry enough. So we will pick this up and we'll turn this upside down. And we will go ahead and do the back part of this. And so the first part I'm gonna do is the inside. That's the white, so I'm gonna shake this up really good. Which hopefully that's good enough. So um, I'm also doing the white part, not only because, you know, it's gonna help um, make things easier for me but you know if if I just do the brush off like this versus trying to wash it off I'd rather have this get into this than vice versa right so go ahead and do the inside all right so and you can see by how uneven it is that we're going to have to do two coats of that so <laughs> let that dry for a minute. I'll come back and do the other coat. Right, and I just remembered we should probably do the underside of the lid too. That might be that might be fun. Now we'll wait for those to dry. All right, so that should be good. So let's do a second coat on both of these, just so it evens it out a bit. This is going to be the inside too, so. It's much better, so let that dry real good, and then I will come back and we will do the outside. It's still, you know, a little bit uneven in there, but it's not too bad, and I did have an idea for that actually. Um, I want to do maybe with some polymer clay, food bits, and some uh, UV resin or something to make like a soup or something in there, um, which means that'll be real good. So, all right, uh, I'm not going to do that in this video, obviously. Um, I don't even have any UV resin right now, but um, anyways, we're going to let that dry. I'll come back and we'll do the outside. All right, so this should be yeah, fairly dry enough where we can turn it over and go ahead and do the other. So it's a little tacky still, but that's okay. Um, our knob is good, so we're gonna sit it over here. Um, we'll just kind of turn this over on there. And we'll do the handles last, I think, um, just because it'll be easier. And incidentally, see how clean those brushes are? Well, I went and looked, and guess what you can use to clean enamel paint off of brushes, acetone, which is nail polish remover. So when I buy nail polish remover, I always buy the 100% acetone. It's not the easiest on your nails, but I can also use it to thin down my Fabri-Tac. So honestly, that's more important to me than, than the fingernails are. But um, so that's what I did. I put a little bit in a, a little cup and I kind of swished it around and got these nice and clean. So coolness. All right. 
So I got this shook up a bit. And we're going to go ahead and do these. And I, I imagine just like the um, other side, it's probably going to take two coats. So. this dry and I'm thinking I may end up having to use some gesso some of the black gesso under it um, but we'll see because uh, you know the metallic will pop a lot better on that black gesso and yeah I think I'm gonna go ahead and do um, gesso on it so I'm not gonna worry too much it's still I mean a little tiny bit tacky and whatever but I don't really care because I'm about to paint over it so doesn't really matter, but it's going to give it a much better um, chance of standing out than it will on its own. Because I can see right now that, yeah, if we leave it like that, it's going to take like, God, probably five coats of it, you know, so it doesn't look patchy and uneven because the um, polymer clay that I use is very light colored. And I'm going to leave this on the tape because we don't want this to get on the white part. This one's a slightly different because I'm going to have to do the um, handles and stuff anyway. And so one of the ways you can kind of minimize it is if you go down in the direction of whatever it is you don't want to hit. Um, and you'll, you'll get less of the paint on it than if I was to go up. It's going to kind of, you know, push it off onto the rim and we don't want it on there. tiny bit while I go clean my brush just so you can do with you know obviously water so put that down and I will be right back all right so in theory that has dried enough so we can put our first coat on I went ahead and shook that up so let's try this again this should pop I think hopefully let's make sure it's nice and flexible there it should pop hopefully a little bit better than it was doing yeah still gonna need multiple coats I'm sure but it looks a lot better than it did a minute ago with the, um, you know, whatever color that polymer clay is. I don't even remember what color it is. So there's the first coat. And we will get the second one after that one dries. Okay, so in theory... That should be okay. Kind of pick this up and you want to sort of move it around so that I can get a, a different angle view of it. Um, let's shake this up again. And then I will add another coat. Now technically I should be letting this dry a lot longer between it, but um, I'm doing a small enough piece that I don't think it's a, a huge deal on that. So we'll just do another coat. And hopefully that will do it. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for a while. Um, actually, it's a little tiny bit more right here. There we go. Okay. So we're going to let these dry completely and then I will, you know, flip it over and I'll do the top of the handles. Um, and then we'll be able to come back and attach the knob and that should be good. All right, so I have transferred these over to the tile. I took the little pieces off that we did um, because, again, the enamel takes a lot longer to um, dry and set up and everything. And I don't really want to move it, but I do want to put the, the knob onto the lid because it's going to take a while to dry too because I'm going to use E6000. So what I'm going to do is, let's see. Hmm. I'm going to open that. I'm going to use a toothpick and I'm just going to put a blob of glue onto the toothpick. Probably be the easiest way to do it. 
and then I'm going to get my knob. I'm going to transfer that blob onto there. And then we are going to place it in the center of our little rings here. And we're going to make a mess of it. There we go. And we are going to let that sit there and dry. So what I'll do is um, let that dry, let these dry. And like I said before, I'll get the, the top part of the, um, the handles as well then. And I keep kind of moving it a little bit because as you can see, it's, you know, some of it's kind of sticking to that. But um, so we'll do all that and I will come back to you once everything is nice and dry and that should actually be it. And um, obviously I'm going to forego doing the other two types of it because I'm sure this video is going to go on long enough. And then we will do um, our little baked goods in a completely different video. But these are starting to look really cool. I like these. So anyways, I'll be back to you in a few. All right. So here we have it, our little pot. Hopefully you can see that pretty good. The interior is like really bright white. Um, so I think, because I am gonna do another one, um, I think on the other one, maybe I'll take like, I don't know, the, the cream paint, cause it's a little more of a sand, um, or maybe even this, maybe mix those two together or something and do it so it's not quite as stark. Um, and I'm also going to use the paracord guts idea for the rings because you know I like it and it came out cute and everything but these rings are just they're too big and they're kind of I don't know they kind of throw it off for me um, and again I'm not God's gift to polymer clay so it's not the straightest lid this is not you know a miniature that somebody's going to pay hundreds of dollars for <laughs> by a long shot which is fine but um, it does look super cute on the stove I'll turn that here let me hold it down see so it fits it's in scale and oh my god did that enamel paint come out gorgeous or what uh, can you see can you see how shiny that is it is so shiny and sparkly and it looks like the real thing um, as far as the color <laughs> anyway it, it looks like the you know derpy cousin of of my actual Le Creuset but um, anyways so yeah we're gonna make another one of these um, except I'm going to go up in size. I think I'm going to go up to a seven and a quarter quart um, because I have one over here in the kitchen so I can measure against that. Um, and so that one we're going to do with um, probably the Sculpey air dry clay. I think that'll be the next video um, and hopefully it you know, won't take quite as long and we'll probably do some more of these things too. I think we'll do that in this berry color here. So um, that will be fun. And then these right here, so I've got all these little oven chambers um, for stuff to be in. So we're going to make some stuff to be in them. And I thought, you know, because this I've got another project that's coming, but um, we can do like a little uh, sheet pan baking tray with some of these in there. And we're going to do some more of the cookware pieces. I think we're going to do a skillet and we'll do a roaster. Um, basically, we'll do some of the pieces that I have in my kitchen because I can I can measure those and I can have them here to look at um, and whatnot. And then whichever ones we don't use from here will go on the new project, um, which will be another video. So I'll kind of bounce in between this and that new project. But basically, the new one is going to be the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, um, done in 12 scale. So the first video that you'll see for it is kind of a design video and here's how I'm going to come up with this. Here's how I'm going to decide how, you know, big to make the furniture and what I'm going to make for it and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and we'll probably do the base um, at that point with that one. But anyway, so we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. Um, and then, of course, my room box got here from um, Bentley House Minis as well. So I'm going to have to come up with something with that. So, yeah, lots of lots of fun stuff coming. So I hope you enjoyed making the little mini Le Creuset and I hope you make your own and I hope it um, is a little more <laughs> symmetrical and flat than mine is but it really came out cute so yeah that's that's how you do the math on these so it's just you know you take whatever in inches you divide it by 12 and that gives you in inches how big your stuff needs to be and then do yourself a favor and go over to Google and and translate that into millimeters because they are far more precise um, measurements and they're much easier to find on a ruler than you know fractions of inches are on a, a regular ruler so anyways hope you guys enjoyed that and i will see you guys later in my next one hey me bye